We will call the meeting to order. Uh, we'll, first item on the agenda is to review and approve the minutes of November 12th. We'll make a motion to approve the minutes for November 12th, 2019. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, one abstention. So three ayes and one abstention. Okay. Any financial statement? <clears throat> there are nine warrants presented for signature totaling $93,280.89. I previously emailed out the <coughs> giant fund and school choice expenditure reports through November 30th. Mm -hmm. If you have any questions, I'm happy to take those. Um, there was one change on the school choice report that I wanted to let you all know of, that there was a laminator purchase for the school. Um, and after some conversation with Tina, we decided to do that with school choice, school choice funds. Otherwise, the general fund uh, remains on track to the budget. Um, and we're currently starting the planning as outlined at the last meeting for the FY21 budget. Tina and other administrators and department heads met with me last week, and so we're working on all the numbers. Any questions? I assume the copier, the copier uh, contract must have been paid or something, because I noticed a lot of the copier stuff is like zero now. Oh, I'll have to look at that. Meaning like, um, just anywhere where there are copiers and stuff, like there's no budget money left, so I assume that maybe a contract so went they, into place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so if okay. we have a monthly lease, they incur the full amount gotcha. so that it's reserved for the year, and then they just pay down the deal. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Um, okay. Sorry, I remember this, but the arts partnership? Yeah, that is. a bit of yeah, in the middle of the year or something, or we didn't put in. She wasn't aware that there's a line there. Right. Basically, mm -hmm. so Shelly is, is going to add that, I believe. I am. Um, and Tina and I, and I have had a little bit of conversation about it. I did speak with um, Stephen in the business office as well, who handles a lot of that. Um, we just need to get it on the account. There was also some, what you see here on the school choice report, that was paid late because we received the invoices late, so that was technically from... Um, last year, so we need okay. to kind of get it on track again. Okay. But the funds are there for it, it's just not showing up here yet. Okay. And I, I guess I would say <clears throat> the laminator purchase is a great is a great purchase. Uh, school choice funds, when you get ready to make recommendations on using them for something like that, they should really run it by us uh, uh, prior to just assigning it to school choice, just so we're kept in the loop and aware of it. As you know, we're in the, in the point where our school choice funds are going to be dwindling over the next few years if we try and absorb things into the regular budget. So we need to keep a close tab on the one year where we sort of ran out of money in school choice. So. You bet. <laughs> uh, Happy to send it That would be my request. Any other questions for Sean? Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's nice to get the report several days in advance. We mm -hmm. <laughs> it a little bit. That thing looks good. So, thank you. Uh, uh, public comment. I notice we have a fair number of people. Do we have any public comment this evening? People just raise just one hand. How many no. hands are we going to have here? Um, if we're going to have this many, I'd ask you to please limit the amount of time that you speak. We'll start. I saw your hand go up first, so you can go up first, and then yeah. to your left, and then go in order down the rest of the way. So. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Muriel Stundis, and I have lived in the South Deerfield on Plain Road for the last 16 years. And I appreciate uh, the opportunity to speak to you. I. Uh, mailed a letter to the school committee. I'm not sure if they got it or not, but I'd like to read it if I may. It's, it's brief. Yeah. Okay. Um, dear committee members, I would like to raise my voice in support of our dear, dear field elementary school teachers in their quest for a fair and equitable contract. <clears throat> I was honored to volunteer in the uh, Deerfield Library here for 10 years, 
and I was most impressed by the positive and child-centered environment. I believe that this atmosphere was created by the teachers. This is a place where children were happy and learning and discipline problems were minimal. <clears throat> the teachers I met were at all kind of times kind, positive, and understanding. I have taught school myself and I have been a substitute teacher in many of the 13 communities in which I have lived. The uh, teachers at Deerfield Elementary and the environment they create is by far the best I have witnessed. I agree with the prevailing attitudes which state that Deerfield is an outstanding community and their schools have an excellent reputation. Thank you very much for listening. And I can, can I bring you a copy? Sure. sure. <laughs> <laughs> Next to you, uh... Hi. Uh, my name is Emily McDonald, and I'm a third grade teacher here at DES. This is my eighth year here, but I've been teaching since 2009. I attended Framingham State College, where I majored in elementary education with a specialization in language arts. I then went on to AIC for my master's in education and my reading specialist license. Throughout negotiations, the Union 38 bargaining team has sought to address an inexplicable disparity between elementary and secondary teachers serving the students of our towns. Union 38 teachers educate the same students who go on to attend Frontier Regional Schools, yet we earn substantially less than our colleagues at Frontier. We urge the school committee members to settle contract negotiations in a way that is fair and reflects the value of elementary teachers that bring, sorry, excuse me, the value elementary teachers bring to our communities. Thank you. Thank you. Hi there. <coughs> I'm Jillian Andrews. I'm a sixth grade teacher here in Deerfield. One of the first things a child learns in his or her family and his or her classroom is trust. And I trust that you will listen to all of us here and listen to us speak to you about our work and our concerns. Our work as teachers is very important to me, and I appreciate your good faith and your time in giving me an opportunity to speak with you. I care deeply about the children that we teach, and I know all of you care deeply about our children, or we wouldn't all be in this room here together on a Tuesday evening. I appreciate the work that you do as principal, as superintendent, and as school committee members. I recognize nobody's getting paid for that. I've been teaching a long time, and 11 out of my 17 years has been right here in Deerfield. Many of us in the district are veteran teachers who've been dedicating our lives to our children, to your children. We've seen them come into the district as four-year-olds and then leave 14, year later, 14 years later as 18-year-olds. And those who are newer teachers are beginning their own journeys to do the same, dedicating their lives. Over the years, our jobs have changed quite a bit. Certainly, teaching is not what it used to be. It feels like a long time ago when we wrote notes on chalkboards. In fact, students don't even really know what a chalkboard is anymore. They only know whiteboards <laughs> or smartboards. One would never have imagined giving children as young as eight rigorous standardized tests whereupon they must type essays and narratives on computers and answer as many as 55 questions in one sitting. But we teachers have adapted and we now teach students as young as five how to use a Chromebook. Kind of miraculous. By the time students arrive in sixth grade where I teach, I'm amazed by not only the technology they've acquired, but also the ability to form arguments describe how to play with the dimensions of polygons in order to solve the area of a shape, and tell me about the complex characteristics of Wilbur as he manages to employ his friends to help save his life on the farm in Charlotte's Web. And I wonder, too, what you think as parents or aunts or uncles or grandparents, what you've seen our young children come home with. What learning has he or she shared where you perhaps think, I never did this kind of work, I never did this kind of thinking when I was in elementary school. Have you ever been shown your child's homework in elementary school and had to admit to yourself, probably not to them, where you're thinking, what does that mean? Or I didn't write essays like this until I was in high school. Or how do they even teach math nowadays? We teachers have ridden the waves of No Child Left Behind, Every Student Succeeds Act, and Common Core. We've tried new curricula, best practices, we come together as teams to share our thinking about those kids who are impulsive, like you can't imagine. And you have a really hard time controlling 
and inhibiting their behaviors and responses. We've taken part of professional development that helps us understand the young child who's grown up with trauma and how we can best support him or her so they might heal and know what it is to become a learner, what it is to be loved unconditionally, because this is the place where maybe that's happening for them the first time. Young children are among the most vulnerable in society, and what we do in the classroom has huge implications. We speak to the hard issues so many of our young children are facing, whether it's the loss of a parent, the loss of a pet, a dying grandparent, or a best friend who betrayed them. But we do that all in the midst of getting them ready to learn. Luckily, we have a wonderful community of families who supports us and values the work we do. Many show up for conferences. They spoil us during Teacher Appreciation Week. They volunteer in our classrooms and in the library, attend all schools, publishing parties, field trips, Junior Olympics, math night, curriculum night. They come to Spelling Bees and the Deerfield Mile. Our community is there when we celebrate on Memorial Day as all of our students listen to the wise words of veterans. Our community celebrates and sings together as we learn to sing songs from China, try new foods from France, and create beautiful block prints from India as we celebrate cultures from around the world on Arts Festival Day. Our community, our communities, are deeply rooted in our elementary schools. And this can be seen firsthand at our concert this Thursday, when we need to hold not just one, but two concerts, because our cafeteria won't fit the numbers of people who attend. And we invite you, all of you, whether you have children here or not, to come and attend and see Deerfield in the community. I'd like to speak briefly about why I'm here, when I would rather be at home resting after a 10-hour day. We're asking for a cost of living increase so we don't have to, in addition to our long hours at work, get a second job waitressing at a local restaurant, or tutoring children on the side, or leave our homes every so often so we can rent them out to Airbnb guests, work in a retail, or run a small business on the side. That's the reality for many of us, myself included, having a second job so I can pay my mortgage. And many of us do these things because if we didn't, we wouldn't be able to pay our mortgage. That's our reality, or our rent. We wouldn't have kids in college. We wouldn't have kids living with us because we can't afford the room and board at college. We have children who have additional medical costs. We have kids who need to go to the dentist. We need to go to the dentist. And yet we have 0% contribution to dental insurance, while our neighbors across the street who work at Frontier get 50% of their dental insurance paid for. And in addition, while we are offered disability insurance, we need to pay, in Deerfield Elementary School, we need to pay 100% of that, while again, our colleagues at Frontier have 40% of their disability insurance paid for. And while all of this is challenging enough, we are stung by the bitter reality that our colleagues across the street, our colleagues who teach the very same students the same students that we had are making more than us. <clears throat> we're not asking to entirely close the gap with this renewed contract. If we were, we would be asking for a 5.76 COLA increase in the first year alone. What we are asking for is over time to close that gap. We are asking for an increase that over the next few years would bring teachers of younger students up to par with those teaching older students. And in my case, I would like to make the same amount each year as my seventh grade colleagues who are teaching one or two subjects to 13-year-olds, while I teach five to six subjects to 12-year-olds. That doesn't make sense to me. I trust that you will listen as I communicate to you how hurt we feel. We wonder. We wonder if you feel our work is not as valuable as the work that our secondary and high school teachers our colleagues next door do less, do less than one mile away. We wonder if perhaps there is some deep-rooted myth that teaching a six-year-old is easier than teaching a 16-year-old. Or perhaps teaching a 13-year-old is more important than teaching a four-year-old, or a 10-year-old, or an eight-year-old, or a 12-year-old. All of us in all of the elementary schools are wondering why we don't get it. 
in the midst of teacher walkouts and protests in six states, Americans across the country, overwhelmingly support paying teachers as the professionals that we are. According to a recent New York Times poll, nearly three-fourths of U.S. adults believe that teacher pay is too low, and two-thirds support increasing taxes to raise the salaries of public school teachers. And I'm going to close with a list of rules created by my fourth grade students two years ago, because I think children actually deliver messages more effectively sometimes than we adults. Be respectful. Think before you speak or act. Take responsibility for your own actions and apologize when you make a mistake. Try your very best. Treat people how you want to be treated. And these two speak to me especially, and I think it speaks to all of us in the elementary schools. Make people feel valued and treat people with fairness. These are the rules we live by in our classrooms, and we ask you to do the same. Thank you. Hi, um, my name is Sarah, and I'm a fourth grade teacher here. Um, this is my third year here but I've been teaching since 2014. Um, I went to UMass where I majored in biology and minored in education. And then I studied for my master's degree in elementary education at UMass as well. Um, we are elementary level educators who work to ensure that students develop the foundational skills they need to continue their journeys through the upper grade levels and beyond. Union 38 teachers are advocating for a collective bargaining agreement that reflects the value educators bring to our community. <clears throat> the towns have asked Union 38 teachers to limit retirement benefits for future Union 38 employees. While we are willing to agree to this change, we're asking that the towns offer a wage increase that offsets the change to this valuable benefit. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jennifer Smith. I'm a fourth grade teacher here at DES. This is my seventh year here, but I've been teaching since 1997. I went to Brandeis University where I majored in psychology and minored in elementary education with a specialization in math education. I then started teaching in Cambridge, Massachusetts while I pursued my master's degree in elementary education at Lesley University. I feel that the success of high school students depends on the professional and skilled instruction of elementary, on the elementary level. After teaching for more than 20 years, I've been professionally trained to teach a wide range of academic areas, including reading, writing, math, social studies, science, and emotional and social development. I love my job as an elementary school teacher. I love with the, that we are there each morning as a secure and safe place for children to arrive and learn and grow. I love that we see each child as an individual first and spend the time to get to know them and love them and nurture them. I love that we spend time when tears well up as a student struggles to encourage them through a challenge so we can be there to celebrate on the other side. I love that if a conf conflict arises at recess, we spend our lunchtime sitting with them in small groups, talking about what it is to be a good friend and how we support each other. I love that we can plan out a project with colleagues that will connect several topics that we've been studying so each student can feel engaged inspired and excited to come to our classrooms each day. I love that before school starts, after school ends, and during our planning times each day, we can listen to students' joys and concerns so they know they are loved and cared about. I love being an elementary school teacher. I hope that you can think about your own children and their experiences in an elementary school. I'd like to think that since your children went through our elementary school or are in our elementary school currently, you could say that you value the enormous amount of time that elementary school teachers spend to make your child feel safe and happy, valued and excited to come to school. As we value your children, 
I hope you'll find it in yourselves to value us and support us as we ask for a fair contract to close the gap. I want to thank you and uh, say that I certainly appreciate your coming forward and speaking out tonight. Um, I can only speak for myself uh, initially here, but I can say that 30 years ago, or 35 years ago, back when I started being involved with the schools when my kids were in the elementary school and just starting in the elementary school, um, I was part of a group that helped build this building uh, that, you, that you get to teach in. This community, uh, after that stage, has continuously supported the schools through all the times of hard budgets, uh, <coughs> proclamation two and a half, school, show, I mean, you know, the uh, school ed reform, everything. This community consistently supports you. We have a deep appreciation for what you do. I know that I have a deep appreciation. That's why I continue 30 years later to remain on the school committee. A deep appreciation for what teaching is, what teachers provide in the development of young people. Um, we certainly recognize that, but we also, or at least I have to as an elected official, have to balance numerous things. Unfortunately, we're not a regionalized K to, nine, K to 12 or pre-K to 12 system. Your t contract is the Union 38 contract. Frontier teachers are under the Frontiers contract. <coughs> and those two agreements have always been negotiated separately. Uh, I think this is the first contract negotiation, maybe the second, that I haven't been involved in at the Union 38 level. Um, and the discrepancies you're talking about, the disparities that you're talking about, the inequities that you're talking about evolved over two or three contract periods. Certainly, I think, and I can only speak again for myself, but I think I'm probably speaking some of the sentiments of my, my colleagues here. We understand your concerns. We hear them. I, I want to find a way to address them. Uh, as someone said, you can't address it all at once can't address it in one year. I don't know if we can address it in one contract, but there are realities and we have to deal, or at least I have to deal with not just my deep appreciation for what teachers do and provide for the community, but also what the community can afford and how we provide, and how the community provides services across all the range of services in town. So it's a different, ba difficult balancing act, and it's something, this is a dance that starts in December with the development of budgets and goes right up to town meeting in April. Um, and unfortunately, it's a dance that also involves people, the salaries they pay, the benefits they accumulate. Can the town continue to afford, and can the schools continue to afford to pay and, and keep all of the things going and, and recognize, continue to recognize the work that you all do. Um, and I know that you were in mediation now. I know that you've got your <coughs> concerns, you're expressing them here tonight. Um, and, uh, you know, we're going to do everything we can to reach <coughs> and agree. So, I don't know if anyone else has. Well, I would echo a lot of that. And I, you know, I sit here and listen. Um, and it, you know, it means a lot. And the whole reason I got involved uh, sitting here you know, before this, the PTA and the fun fair got me started many, many years ago, not many, four or five years ago. Um, and I care a lot about this school. It's the only reason I, I started to get into public service here and then um, understanding the needs of this school, thought I could also be a voice at, at, um, on our select board um, and to advocate for the town why this school is so important and why these teachers are so important and um, I care a lot about the children and the work that you all do and it's it's a very hard balance because I also hear from all the other employees in the town that are employees just like you that um, don't have the benefit of a, knowing what the coal is going to be three years in a row um, and I worry immensely about the amount of um, 
support we can give you when um, we can only raise a certain amount of money each year on the school, uh, on the whole town. Um, you know, very, very minimal amount of money can get raised every year because you have a cap. So then you have to decide where that several hundred thousand dollars will go. Two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars will go, and it has to go to pay for all of our employees, all the health insurance, anything we want to do in town. Um, we have a $19 million sewer project that we have to get going. Um, there's an immense amount of work and expense going into the town, and um, I felt like we've always wanted to support our school first. This is one of the areas that we um, that drives people to want to buy a house here, um, pay their taxes here, raise their children here, move to town. Um, and that's the whole reason I got involved with um, being on the school committee and then on the, on the select board to try and advocate for this place because it is such a special place. My only son, you know, started in preschool here very early and, um, and, and you all have carried him through to Frontier now and he's, um, he's having a great education there but it, it definitely takes a village to do all that. Um, but so kind of where I'm coming from is that I'm very concerned that we only have a certain amount of money and it's wh where does that money go and and I don't so at at town I when I decide with others what the COLA will be for one year for all of our people um, I fight very hard about putting different amounts on different <laughs> steps because I'm very concerned that um, everybody works very hard from the teacher that just started to one that's been here for 10 or 15 or 20 years they all deserve that same percentage of increase and so uh, I'm not in favor of um, seeing different percentages at different steps that that concerns me a lot I fight against that at town and I was able to push that back last year to make sure that everybody got the same COLA um, so I don't like separating or making you know each increase should be equitable between between all different steps so um, that I've had a struggle with that and then I, I just have a struggle with having um, knowing all the other costs of the town coming forward how are we going to be able to support you with the IAs and professional development and you know I, I've just in the four or five years I've been here I've seen the needs of these kids grow immensely and I know what you're dealing with I can you know I'm not here every day but I talking with Tina and hearing from you the work has gotten harder and the needs of the children have gotten more intense um, even at the younger ages as they're carrying up through so um, I want to be able to make sure we have money to pay you and also to give you that support and that extra help in the professional development so it depends on where how you split that up if I put it all in one spot I don't have it for the rest so, um, and I agree, it will take time to get to that. Um, it'll take time to close that gap eventually, but um, it can't all be done in one year. It can't be done in one contract. So um, just know that I care immensely about what you do, and we are always definitely trying to find a way to, to close that gap for you to make sure you feel wanted and appreciated and compensated for what you do. It's just a really hard balance. So we'll continue fighting, figure out a way to, you know, get a, get a balanced budget for you and get a contract you believe in. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, well, well, thank you again for your thoughts. And uh, we'll move on with our agenda now. Uh, <clears throat> capital expenditure. Updating on funding <clears throat> for a generator. All right, so we um, so we have the two, the A and B are the capital expenditure and the updates on the capital right. projects. Right. Yes. So the kind of throwing them together, I sent out as part of the packet the capital request going forward, and I don't know if there's any comments on them. I just wanted to kind of be clear that we're trying. We're going to submit the generator and hope that it kind of comes off of the school's request and becomes the town's <coughs> request because I don't try to. I don't want to mix. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to mix what town needs are versus school needs because the school could. We could right. run without a generator, but exactly. um, the building and protecting the building should have a generator. So, 
Um, but I wanted to get it out there on there. And mm -hmm. then the other one was the, I think it's gonna come in further up, is that the softball field <clears throat> that's connected with the school, you know, we need a few thousand dollars to replace the fencing for safety reasons. And the benches and such, and I wanna go to CPA for that. But all the other ones are pretty much straightforward. Um, I don't know if you want to go through them again, or if there's any questions on it. The thing I would mention is the, the um, I, was, I saw that on the CPA request for the fence over there, and I was also talking with, I want to get in touch with the rec department too, because I know that there's funding in there that maybe we could put the court out there. Either one, but I think right. either one should get, should cover that to get that done, because I know it's a safety issue. Mm -hmm. And the, the only other thing I noted was the uh, $50,000 for the front entryway. Um, I know that we seven or eight thousand dollars to repair something last year, and I know that CIP, the Capital Improvement Planning Committee, had discussed something looming down in the future. We just, this was not in there last year in terms of their planning, so that that's new in my perspective to the capital planning committee otherwise everything is basically in line with what we in right to, to explain the, the, the front walkway that's kind of grown a little oh, bit it's. in the sense of the scope of the project i think at first it was just looking at replacing the asphalt and i think mm -hmm. that original that 40 to fifty thousand dollar number was to replace the asphalt and the curbs as you can see are starting to split away the trip hazards that kind of stuff right and i think to take down some of the vegetation and replant yeah. you mm -hmm. got you know hiding spots and stuff which is not great around elementary school um, but at the same time, right now, we have an MV MVP grant going out to see if we can get for designs about making it an, an ecologically friendly rain catching right. systems and that kind of stuff to be teaching spots mm -hmm. as well here and around that loop out um, where the drop off is. And so if we can get that grant, then we can get plans that will give us a better number for this. So this is the really one to put on the radar that says, hey, gang, we're, we're looking at this yes. next year. We're probably going to ask for a grant to probably ask for funds to match the MVP grant unless it comes around. Trevor, you know, probably know the turnaround on that. Like yeah, the MVP that. grants are going fast. They come up pretty quick, and you need to s spend them right away. And the first will be design. And we, we do have the MVP grant we've applied for for round four would be to look at using impervious surfaces in the front when right. we do that. Mm -hmm. So um, we should get answers on that pretty quick. Um, I think in January we should know whether. We're involved, but a lot more towns have caught on to the bandwagon and signed up and became MVP qualified. So, you know, we've been, we, the town has been um, granted grants the last three sessions, but we're kind of eyes wide open. We're probably not going to get them as much as we did before. We, we have been fully funded, but we think it's an important project and I think, you know, it makes sense to do that. And it really needs to be safer. And we had talked about kind of different ways to do the, maybe line up in the morning and just to make it safer for the kids they know where they're going to go the early you know the younger kids they know they go here and mm -hmm. so we look we were trying to think of a design that might look good and right. also be safe but we should be able to find that out pretty quick but i think it's good to get on their radar that we'll be asking for that stuff in the future and, and hopefully get a paper it was nice about the grants we also tied with, with frontier to try to get their AP environmental classes <coughs> curriculum attached to it to make yep. it more about learning and then yep. we'll trickle that down to the elementary as well. To yes. make it learning sites about renewable water. And where's your water, water, water go? go? Where does it come from? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess you got to hear what comes with work. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Um, and then we have the CPA for the softball fence. For those in the audience that know, don't know what CPA is, it's the Community Preservation Act and there's funding in the town of Deerfield set aside, um, it's in our tax bills as well, but um, that money goes into a pool and it's divided up between open space, recreation, historic preservation, there's a fourth one there. So yeah, senior housing. Or senior housing, housing, yes. Affordable housing. Or affordable housing. So th there are four or five areas that you can apply under and so we're thinking of any work we're going to do on the softball field, we're going to see if the uh, CPA funds can be utilized to do that. Uh, since that is truly a community field, it's used as, as much or more by Frontier than it is by the elementary school, yeah, except during the recess. Yeah, yeah. no, and the rec department. They got strong at growing softball. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. And the whole, so, the whole uh, playground was kind of funded by that a couple of years ago. So. Mm -hmm. Tennis yeah. yeah. while back before that. Right. So. Yep. Well, this goes on. Yep. Yes. Um, so, <clears throat> no votes required. I mean, nope. 
Any other thoughts from people on capital or <coughs> capital needs? No. Um, so new business. Collaborative for Education Services consideration of amended agreement. All right, so that was, um, that whole packet was emailed out to you as well. The, basically the collaborative, because it's a, in order to have new membership, um, they have to change their charter, and in changing their charter, they want to invite in Gateway Regional in Worthington. I imagine Gateway must have been a part of it at one point. Worthington used to be part of Gateway. Yeah, I know, right. I grew up in Worthington, yep. part of Gateway. Um, so um, <laughs> the split is dear to my heart, I guess. Yeah. Um, but they, I think they left at one point, and now they want back in. So we have to vote. Um, that's the major part of the change. The other one is that they're going to charge non-members 25% more than members. For members, for so yeah. you know, for, for the services. services they provide, most of the schools in the area that are members. I don't know who directly that would affect. I guess it would affect the gateway. Um, but I, I mean, all the major um, public schools in the area are part of the, this collaborative. Um, and I think those are the two major things. There's one about a visiting membership from <coughs> visiting governance from the state, but it's just some word changing. Mm -hmm. um, but um, commissioner appointed liaison, I think, is can come to the board, but has never showed up. So. Um, that's basically it. So it's really straightforward. Uh, does this amendment change it from HEC to uh, the collaborative, or was that the previous agreement? I can't remember from my time on it. You know what? I think I don't see a word change okay. for the title of the. Okay. It's still going to be called that. So no, it's. Yeah, that's it. Okay. <clears throat> make so. a motion to have the chair um, sign. Make a motion to have the chair sign the the um, amended agreement for the collaborative for educational services. So a motion to approve and direct the chairman to sign? Yes. Okay. I'll second that. Chairman. <coughs> Any other discussion, Chair? No. Any wisdom to no, give us as the uh, representative? It's pretty plan? straightforward. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. I know, she made you okay. present. So. <laughs> okay. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Thank you. We have file reports. Page two. And the second page. Your report. What's that? You're the first report. Yes, no, report. I, have, I have no report to make mm -hmm. other than the weather was good for Thanksgiving. So. Good. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yes. 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 <clears throat> Then it was a collaborative. Yeah, that was emailed out. She yep, did. That was emailed she, that right. was you. she mailed us to the yeah, emergency report. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's me. That's You're up. Right. Yeah. And I've got a copy of the principal yeah. reports. You guys are all on it. So we just wrapped up a week long. Of course. We just wrapped up a week long um, successful book fair event in three days instead of four. So we had a, a snow day. Um, and just want to give a shout out to Lauren Roma, school librarian, the PTA, for um, helping to organize this successful event. We actually had a, a celebrity sighting. Beth Schmidt was here. So. <laughs> <laughs> The Go Green Committee, um, which is a team of teachers, Kathy Bresciano, Julian Andrews, Allison Miller, Ann Naughton, Suzanne Ryan, and Layla Hazen, and I'm sorry if I forgot, because it's growing, if I forgot somebody on there, it's a growing committee. <laughs> they have a green thumb. No, okay, thanks too much. Um, in conjunction with Amy Donovan from Franklin County Waste, they've been working to reboot the composting uh, program here, which is an important way for the children um, to see themselves as proponent of change while learning how to um, sustain. And we have some new signage, and we're composting, and we're straw free in the cafeteria. Oh, good. And that's not for eating, the straws for drinking milk. Right. So, um, our winter concert, like Jillian said, Jillian, winter concert. We've got two showings coming up, so come join us. Our music musicians have been working hard and preparing. So, that's at 10 and 2 on Thursday. Community service, we've had so much community service going on. There's a food drive led by our school adjustment counselor, Colleen Smith, and um, they teamed up with the staff and fed over 10 families through the holiday season, provided a feast for them, actually. And they haven't stopped yet because now we're trying to fulfill some holiday wishes. So we have over 12 DES families that were um, 
do you have, we have a, a wish wreath drive that's going on, so we'll be providing families with some gifts. Um, in addition, the Paws Group and the Girls on the Run are collecting donations for the Dakin Humane Society and Franklin County Animal Shelter because we can't leave out our furry friends around the holidays, so we're hoping to drop off those donations. Where's my, oh, okay, I was just in the note. Jen's usually my laughing <laughs> one over here, so I wasn't sure who was. I need an audience, keep going. Um, so for professional development, we've been, uh, a lot of work has kind of sprung out of our trauma-informed uh, instruction and academic rigor, and you can see some of the um, teachers deepening their um, classroom thinking and um, able to kind of reach into that professional development that they're using, you can see it in the classrooms. In a related vein, our instructional leadership team is act actively investigating visible learning by Hattie um, to look at different effect sizes of various teaching influences on student achievement. And also, we have a Union 38 MAP committee, which is 14 members strong, and they're currently exploring mathematic assessment, instructional design, vertical and horizontal alignment, as well as curriculum resources. I know Jen is on that committee. Anybody else on the MAP committee here? So, yeah. Lisa? Um, facilities. Our carpet replacement scheduled for two classrooms, one in K and two, will be completed. Uh, we'll complete that over the holiday break along with the um, public bathroom restoration. And technology, desktops uh, to laptops in our computer lab. So, so we um, have laptops in there now, which Megan, is she here? Yep. Megan is enjoying all the new space that it's providing and um, the flexible seating. <laughs> an organization in there. Um, and the security system recently, Scott and Bill have, um, I should say William Hildreth and Scott Paul, our IT director and our facilities um, director, have recently met with vendors to discuss the rollout of the access control system expansion and video um, surveillance. That project will be replaced, will replace and expand the video surveillance with 10 cameras and all 16 doors will integrate into the access control system. <coughs> giving us the ability to monitor every door. So we're kind of in process with everything right now. We're, we're great, moving forward. Great, right? With some grant Yes, staff. that was Good. a safety grant. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. So that brings us to our classroom news. Yeah. Pre-K students have been exploring power and choice through interest in superhero and police play. Sometimes I think us, we do that too during the day. <laughs> <laughs> this Thursday, um, Brian Ravish will be visiting and sharing about his job. Great. Kindergarten students are turning into strong writers, and they're, um, they're adding more to their writing. They're being brave spellers, and they're connecting that sound symbol. So they're hearing the letter sounds and connecting them to the words that they're writing. Uh, Grace, two students have been working on their writing nonfiction. Um, they're working on some Who Am I? Trifold booklets with a guide to leaders, readers. I have to apologize because I'm in the middle of a coughing fit. I don't know if you guys have caught on to that. So I'm chewing on mints and drinking water and spilling it everywhere. <coughs> so um, they're figuring out their animals by reading clues, both words and pictures. Uh, there's a lot that goes into that work. Um, and in the end, they get a watercolor painting with the animals that will accompany the work. A uh, highlight, um, I actually brought this up in a faculty meeting because I thought it was such a, a wonderful um, way for students to kind of show they're grateful, they're grateful for it. They wrote letters to the custodians and apologized for them having to clean the toilets. <laughs> so after hitting the cards to the custodians, they got really excited about their responses and they ended up giving cards to many different people in the building, thanking them for all the job that they've done to help um, uh, make their, their time here uh, safe and supported and happy. So fourth graders in the midst of a fairy tale ad adaptation unit I actually had the pleasure of meeting with some of the fourth grade students from Miss Miss class to talk to me about how they adapted a fairy tale about the principal that was going off to do a dance competition, but the teachers didn't think she could actually make it. Oh. I think the teachers were right on that. They were not being able to <laughs> a dance off. Um, so they're learning a lot about writing and their principal. Um, they're going to be publishing their stories next week and they share them with their families and you know, kindergarten reading buddies. And fifth grade is in the middle of a science unit that explores chemicals and their properties, and they're learning how to mix substances together and um, the, the changes that they'll make and what new materials can be formed. I actually joined that classroom, too, and brought myself home a bag of goo that day to share with my grandson, so you never know what the gifts you're going to find when you walk into a classroom. 
Um, 6A is currently raising money for a project related to weather, climate change, um, in their unit of science study. And their goal is to acquire two water bottle filling stations to provide each and every student and staff with a water bottle by the end of the year. Mm. Yeah, it's a big goal, and I think they're gonna they're gonna power through it. <laughs> Can't wait for my water bottle. I can use one. <laughs> <laughs> um, and in Spanish, kindergarten students are learning the words for winter clothes. Um, a bit early this year, Chuck writes in here. That's kind of funny because we had a little cold spell. Um, first and second grade are talking about months, seasons, and numbers. And second, um, no, third grade met with students, the older students, before Thanksgiving, and we're singing songs together. So other than that, we here at DES are just kind of like skating through till vacation. Not really done much. Thank <laughs> you. Yes, you are. I emailed that one out. Um, mm -hmm. The highlights of it is that last week I was able to present um, Gabe Jones Thompson with the Superintendent's Award at the banquet up at um, Franklin Tech. Um, and so Gabe is a, a student from Sunderland who uh, will be presenting the award at the next Frontier meeting. But so, uh, congratulations to him for his excellence. Mm -hmm. um, we have, believe it or not, we have negotiations underway. And so I kind of just give an update there that we've been working on that. Um, we've begun to be the budgets for next year. Um, and Shelly's done an excellent job of setting up to get the initial information. I think it's the strongest set of I've seen since I've been here. Um, getting the, all the information out of all um, the needs, the wants, the wish lists, and, and then so that we can juggle them from there as we start to break that down. Um, I haven't made any progress in the Unit 38 agreement development. Um, so i kind of preoccupied on some other things. Um, the capital project for the Frontier, we had a meeting last night, and so we're moving forward on, right now we have an RF, RFI to, regarding the tracks. So we hope to be moving forward on those, some of the bigger projects there, and we'll be reported at the Frontier meeting on that. Um, we just talked about the capital improvements for all the buildings in all the towns. Um, we are working on the PD early lease schedule for next year. We're kind of in brainstorming sessions now. Um, we'll be looking out, going out to the community for feedback, including teachers on that, um, about what's good, what's bad, and what we can modify. Um, looking ahead at that, I don't think there's a, a magic wand solution to it. I think there's going to have to be some give and take. Um, I think professional development is one of the most important things that we're doing right now as a district because it moves the bar when it creates time for teachers to um, collaborate and look at what they're doing and um, have time to to improve yeah. and um, so you know trying to get that balance with the I know the, the parent need of child care and the costs associated with that so we're looking at the different angles there and um, I'm still doing a new superintendent production program which gives me lots of homework too. <laughs> Thank you. That's great. Right. Thank you. I think we're down and going to executive session. Yeah, if you want to go to executive session, to discuss um, the current. Right. So we would be entering executive session pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining with the Union for Great Teachers. I would note that we, just one second, we, we will not be taking any actions when we come out of the executive session. We'll be just coming out to adjourn. You had a question. I'm just wondering if you're taking any more public comments tonight. I'm sorry, I missed the early public comment period. If it's not a long <coughs> public comment, then <laughs> I just want to say it for all these wonderful teachers in the room. So I, this is my first school committee meeting I've attended this year. I'm here to get involved, be informed, and to support the teachers who are educating my children here. I have daughters in sixth grade and fourth grade. Um, I trust the teachers to know what the issues are and what what they need and want and what's equitable for them. Um, some of the things I've heard that I'm concerned about, of course, pay equity across the district schools, between the high school and the elementary schools, um, but also some little things that I, I'm, I'm learning, so I'm not sure I'm gonna get it right here, mm -hmm. but um, I've heard concerns about um, differences in dental benefits, in um, prep periods, in the ways that sick time gets recorded for elementary teachers versus high school teachers, and 
those things that may seem smaller in comparison to the pay structure, I'm a teacher in Greenfield, are really concerning to me, especially um, those smaller things that really make a difference in not only the daily lives of the teachers, but retirement, getting your sick time back. Um, I have a big concern about just those small pieces as well. So I'm hoping that, I'm sure the school committee is looking at it. I'm sorry I missed everything that was said. I want to be better informed, so I hope you'll fill me in. Um, but I just felt it was important that I get my parent voice out there, that I'm here to support these teachers. Thank you for that. Thank you for letting me make a comment. Sure. Do you have a name? Sean Durett, S-H-A-W-N-D-U-R-R-E-T-T. And Rich, I saw you came in late too. So uh, I wonder if you want to say anything. I'll second everything Sean said. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, well then, do I have a motion? Motion to interview? Okay, Very good. Roll call vote. Uh, Mary? Yes. Jerry? Yes. Yes, sorry. Yes. 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 Yes.